This is Twit. Okay, Brian, so here we are mm -hmm. with our three routers. And remember, I'm using Linksys WRT54Gs just because I had a ton of these. I had, uh, like, I think 16 of them in, sitting in a closet. <laughs> yep. I still have them in active deployment, but it doesn't have to be WRT54Gs. It could be any router that you have hanging around. Uh, we need at least three. So you're going to have the core or root router. So this, mm -hmm. is, this is my core. What this is going to do is this is the one that's going to be connecting to the internet. It needs to be the most secure because it's feeding all of the other routers. And it's the one that's facing the internet. So it needs to make, you need to make sure that there are no active exploits that people could, could use to take this over. Right. Because if they get this, they get access to the sub routers. Right. I also like that you've you've gone ahead and you know named it and put the IP. Oh, on doc, there. Yeah. If you're going to do this project, <laughs> documentation is absolutely essential. I'm doing this because I have control of my data closet. I'm the only one who ever goes in there. Yeah. But if you're putting these in a common area, maybe putting the admin username and password <laughs> on the box. On the front is a bad, not kind a good of a no-no. So, yeah. But write it down someplace. You need it like in a spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. Keep track. Now I've got a second one. So I've got the core router. I'm also going to have this. This is my trusted router. So this is the one where I'm going to put all the devices that I can trust mm. and all the devices that I want to keep most safe. So, for example, that's my desktop. That's my laptop. That's the access point for just my devices. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my NAS box and, and my sling box. Right. So the things that I want to access on my personal network, that's what I mean by trusted. And then the I've got this. This is untrusted. So this is all the junk. Yeah that I don't want to give access to my network. Right. Things that there might be exploits for out on the internet that you, there's just no way to patch them, but you still want to use them. Like maybe some security cameras, maybe a storage device, maybe just people connecting to your network that you don't know. Precisely, exactly. So, or uh, IoT, yeah. or like uh, doorbells and mm. sensors and lights. Now, the thing is, we're calling this three dumb router, but I could have a lot more. I mean, <laughs> once, I've got, once I've got the core router, I can put as many sub-routers as I want. Right. We talked about this before. So if I want 12 dumb routers, I can absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. but the question is why you have 13 routers <laughs> just sort of sitting and chilling in place. That would be a little scary. A, I mean, a little bit scary. These are pretty cheap to pick up, though, aren't they? Like, even if you want on eBay or something, I think I see these usually going for around... I don't know. 30, yeah, and, and bucks. to that, I would say there's a discussion in, in the chat room about this. Um, I don't know if I would pick up Linksys WRT54Gs. If you had them laying around. If I had them laying around or any other routers laying around, we'll talk about this in a little bit, uh -huh. then I might consider it. If I was going to get something just brand new, I right. might go with something like the MicroTix. MicroTix makes some very nice low price routers mm -hmm. that would be perfect for the three dumb router setup and they are relatively new. Okay. They're not 15 years old. <laughs> it's hard to believe that these are 15 years old now. I know, right? I, I, I grew up with you these You probably routers. still have one of these sitting somewhere, yeah? Oh, absolutely. I, uh, it's the first router I tried using DDWRT on. Which is what we want to talk about. The one caveat to doing three dumb routers is you need to make sure your router is up to date, mm. which is not going to be easy if you have a 15-year-old router. They stopped, Linksys stopped making, well, it's actually not even Linksys anymore. It was Cisco Linksys for a while. Now it's Belkin Linksys? Uh, I think so, yeah. I, well, now, I don't know what they are anymore. But uh, they stopped making firmware for this router in 2009. <laughs> so that was a little while ago. It was ago. a little while ago, uh, which means... If there are any exploits that have developed for that firmware since then, it will always be vulnerable, which yeah. is why if you're going to do this with old hardware, I would suggest you only do it with hardware that can be upgraded to DDWRT or OpenWRT. Okay. This is the open source firmware movement, that, uh, which is why these were so popular. Right, because it gives you access to a lot of things that you didn't have before with the prior software. Right? Absolutely. People were using these in enterprise. I actually saw these in a lot. In fact, I've used these in a lot of low-cost Soho offices mm -hmm. because you can do things like install a VPN server on this. Mm -hmm. It's not a very good VPN server because the hardware was limited, but that was unheard of back then. I mean, yeah. this is back in the day where security was literally... Just turn it off. <laughs> Just unplug it. Just unplug yeah. it. You can't get owned if it's not plugged in. Exactly. Okay. And uh, yeah, so again, this is the caveat. If you've got that 15-year-old Netgear router and it's running 10-year-old firmware and there is no chance to upgrade it, that's a throwaway. Well, that, you yeah. also talked about that policy you have with your NASs too. As soon as they have end-of-life service and they're not patching anymore, you take it off your network. 
Yeah, exactly, right? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I wanna give you a really short video, just a quick clip on what you're gonna do if your router does support Open, DR, open WRT or DDWRT. Mm -hmm. If it does, the procedure is gonna be pretty similar for you as it is for one of these uh, WRT54Gs. This is uh, this is sort of best practices. Before you you get to creating your three dumb router setup, mm -hmm. you're gonna want to make sure that uh, you've got firmware that can last. Without further ado, this is what you do with this. For our 3DUM router, or 3DR setup, our primary source of routers will be a pile of 15-year-old Linksys WRT54Gs. These have been in storage for a while, so I want to upgrade their firmware to something a little less ownable. As one of the original open source firmware darlings, DDWRT is a natural choice for firmware on our Linksys boxes. But it's not always as easy as downloading and patching. We first need to identify the version of each WRT54G to make sure we're going to get the firmware that is most appropriate. Version checking is as simple as navigating to the DDWRT page for the WRT54G and checking the first four characters of your router's serial number against the chart. In my case, I have a single version 1 and two version 4 units, one of them being a G and the other being a GS. Make sure to double check your version as loading the wrong firmware on your router may brick the device. This is custom firmware, which means not everything will work without a hitch. For example, my version 154G is so old that I couldn't directly upgrade to the latest DDWRT firmware. Instead, I had to first load the stock Linksys firmware, then load DDWRT. You'll need to find the proper way to do it with whatever routers you're using. A little tricky for me, since Linksys no longer offers that firmware for download off their site, but nothing a little Google search couldn't fix. Again, take your time and get it right. You may not get a second chance if you break the device. Once we've got the firmware that we'll be installing, it's time for a 30-30-30 on our 54Gs. This is a procedure to completely reset the router, from the config to the NVRAM. It's the best practice before an upgrade, and a great way to wipe away any ancient configurations that I had on my old routers. With the power on, hold down the reset button for 30 seconds. While still holding down the reset button, disconnect power for 30 seconds. Again, still holding down the reset button, reconnect power and continue to hold the button for another 30 seconds. After the 30-30-30, you should be able to get back into your router and see that everything has been reset to firmware stock. If you can't get in, it just means that your router isn't serving DHCP. Set a static IP on your computer of 192.168.1.100 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. This should give you access to the default slash 24, and you'll be able to get to the admin page at 192.168.1.1. Once your router is reset and you're back into the user interface, navigate to the administration tab and select the firmware that you just downloaded. Check the option to reset to default, then start the upgrade process. The process will take a few minutes. If you're connected to the internet, you'll lose your connection as the update continues, but do not disconnect power unless you want a brick. Once the interface is again available, we'll set our login credentials and will then be dropped into the system information screen. Make sure to document the login credentials that you created, then repeat the process on the other routers in your 3DR setup. Get everything up to date, but leave all your settings at their default. That configuration is coming up. Now, it should be mentioned mm -hmm. that the firmware on these DDWRTs is not all that up-to-date either. Yeah. Uh, I think the last update uh, for, for this group in general was in 2015, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still a whole lot better than 2009. Yeah, so maybe using it as your core router wouldn't be such a good idea, but you know, in a pinch and for doing this project, they're still good. Precisely. And in the chat room, you've got people like uh, like Neo and uh, I think it was Specs who are saying Microtik. And mm -hmm. yeah, I love Microtik. And if Microtik is willing to send us some gear to play with, I would love to show it off on the show.